After the left knee is prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion, an extremity drape is placed. The left knee is brought into full flexion to completely remove any additional slack in the drapes themselves. This is to facilitate appropriate placement of the demeo. The demeo device is fitted appropriately to the table. It is important to ensure that all areas are appropriately padded. Following this, the extremity can be secured. The knee is then identified, surgical landmarks and incisions are outlined. Incision is made along the medial aspect of the knee. And retractors are used to allow visualization and mobilization of soft tissues. Cautery is utilized for superficial hemostasis. Deep tissues are incised directly with sharp dissection. Again, cautery is utilized to allow any hemostasis. Medial and lateral proximal tibial releases are performed to allow appropriate mobilization of tissue and visualization of the bony uh, tissues. Retractors are placed to aid in such. The distal femur is visualized in its entirety, and after access to the medullary canal is made, the distal femoral cutting guide is placed. The distal femoral cut is then made. Through use of the distal femoral cutting guide, posterior referencing system, the appropriate implant size and position is identified. Identified holes provide landmarks for placement of the final distal femoral cutting block. Anterior chamfer cut is made and the block is removed to allow appropriate inspection of the anterior cut. In this example, the decision was made to proceed with a smaller implant. The cutting block is then reapplied to the distal femur and secured in position with threaded pins. The anterior cut is revisited. And subsequent posterior as well as anterior and posterior chamfer cuts are then made. Bony resections are removed with use of the rangeurs and cautery. Attention is then turned to the proximal tibia. The ACL is released, and any capsular tissue is released to the, prox to the posterior margin of the proximal tibia. The extramedullary cutting device is applied to the tibia. It is pinned in a position in neutral holes on the proximal side. Position is confirmed in the coronal plane following the axis of the tibia and in the sagittal plane following parallel. A third pin is used to hold position. The tibial cut is made and the bone is resected. Meniscal tissues from both medial and lateral compartments are subsequently removed. The extramedullary cutting device is removed. 
and any bony osteophytes remaining on the proximal tibia are addressed appropriately. The proximal tibial punch guide is placed in an appropriate position and an extramedullary drop guide is used to confirm appropriate rotation as well as coronal and sagittal alignment. Once its position is confirmed, pins can finally be removed and the tibial punch made. With the proximal tibial tray in place, posterior osteophytes are removed from the distal femur. The femoral trial is then applied. The knee is brought into extension and the patella is then averted to allow for appropriate resurfacing. A retractor is then applied to assist with eversion of the patella as well as stabilization. Extra proximal and distal soft tissues surrounding the patella are addressed appropriately. For illustrative purposes, this patella measures approximately 22 millimeters. A resection using a fan blade saw is then made. Sizing to a 32, patellar punch is utilized. And the patellar button is then applied. For illustrative purposes, this confirms appropriate restoration of the patient's anatomy. The trial poly is then placed and the knee is evaluated for stability. Patellar tracking as well as status of the PCL is evaluated in addition to valgus and varus responses to stress. Terminal extension is identified. and maximal flexion is, uh, is demonstrated. A s solid endpoint for the PCL is identified additionally. Appropriate medial lateral positioning of the femoral component is identified and lung punches are done. All trial implants are removed at this point. And both the femur and tibia are prepared for final implants. A drill bit is utilized to provide peg holes for advanced interdigitation of cement with the tibia. Final implants are prepared with coatings of cement by the assistant on the back table. An additional layer of cement is also applied by the surgeon. Implants are then placed and securely seated into final position. Instruments are used to remove any excess cement from the knee, paying close attention to the posterior compartments. Cement is applied to the distal femur. And lug holes are identified for final placement of the, the final component. Again, excess cement is removed, and the trial liner is in inserted into the knee. A 
Attention is then turned to the patella, which is washed and prepared for cementation. The patellar poly is applied, and again, excess cement is removed appropriately. Peripatellar, periosteal, and local soft tissues are infused with local anesthetic at this time. The knee is bathed in iodine solution for a period of three minutes. The knee is then copiously irrigated. Medial and lateral collateral ligamentous structures are evaluated for integrity and any excess or residual osteophytes or loose debris are addressed. The final polyethylene liner is in placed in its final position. As a check, the knee is taken through a full range of motion again and evaluated. Deep capsular tissues are then repaired. Following deep tissue closure, Further subcutaneous and superficial closures are carried out by surgeon preference.